Edge. Hey, this is Derek, and this is WTF at MCL. <coughs> Been a week, and we're back. The whole week? Chris, you got your line, 100%. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> WTF at MCL. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we put you on the spot there, man. I was... Yeah, it's, <laughs> he, he, it's, uh, he was playing pocket pool. I, I was watching it. I was watching it. I was watching it. I was watching it. I was expecting the song would have hit, which is another minute longer. Well, you got to do the disclaimer because you're the business owner, yeah. so you got to do the disclaimer part. No, it's uh, at WTF at MCL, uh, 100% Mark Marin free. Unless. <laughs> and last, uh, uh, with between now and our 100th episode. We can get Mark Marin as a guest. One time. And that would be like 99% Mark Marin. <laughs> and that's still acceptable under the Mark Marin rule. That's so, right. Yeah. That's right. We're Perfect, Chris. So, Perfect. Yeah. Whole new whole new format. Whole new. We got the STDs still here, though. I mean, yeah, all yeah, the guys. Yeah, the the STDs. All the yep. STDs. Yep. Uh, and I guess now we're, we're becoming Christina's STDs. Mm. Christina oh, yeah. is back tonight, so you guys are excited about that. You know Everything what? I'm not so I excited heard. about that. Can I set a separate one Everything I heard was positive. Everything. <laughs> Except um, for what I told you. No. <laughs> no. I mean, but I'm just saying, but who am I? Who am I? I'm Darren Smith and Smokey's Bar and Grill. And he yeah. brought this. Uh, this what, what was that? It was a uh, pizza, pizza burger. Yeah, I, I call it a stuffed pizza. That's literally what it was. Hold right? on, you're getting ahead of me here. I'm getting I, I wanna, sorry. Are we at a commercial break already? <laughs> no, we, I just want to. Well, this is sort of the business part. This is where we talk about. First of all, Mason City Limits, and I'd like to get into that just a little bit because mm-hmm. what the fuck is happening at Mason City well, Limits? Well, our headliner Jamie Stone is here, and yeah. uh, he's here Friday, Jamie. Saturday, and he's here tonight for the show. He is where. Yeah. Jimmy's here. Friday, Jimmy's Saturday, here. 8, 8 o'clock shows. 8 o'clock show. We, uh, and do we have a discount this weekend? Any kind of specials? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, if, you, um, if you eat at Darren's place, you get in for half price. How you about that? Do you have that? to? But you have to actually get the password from Smokey's Bar and Grill. Tell your doorman here at MCL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah, doorman yeah, is yeah. me, by the way. Yeah, that's, <laughs> tell Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're gonna meet a celebrity. I'm the ticket guy. That's I'm right. the doorman. I'm the uh, seater. I'm the MC. I might even bartend this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. No, yeah, you sure. Might have to put that. Uh, you want to do the show too? I can sleep in. I'm an MC. <laughs> no, no. When I MC, I just take orders from the stage. Yeah. Yeah. If you nice. need any, nice. if you need any help with club stuff this weekend, I'm available Saturday, but not Friday. But I can come Saturday if you need somebody to. Right. But I, got, I got actually Cass is going to be uh, our celebrity bartender. Celebrity uh, our, bartender. We had a little tragedy, and our, our friend Jeff and his wife Stacy bartends for us, and her dad passed away. Big so. Shout yeah. out to Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Big condolences, friend of the show. <coughs> Stacy is a saint, genuine certified. Good lady. Yeah, yeah, she married Jeff. So that's she did. Yeah, yeah. She was, <laughs> she was <laughs> canonized at the same. <laughs> time. She wasn't before. She is now. <laughs> you got married God and canonized right. all on the same day. Yep. She's a beautiful woman. And that you know that would be a perfect transition into talking about Smokey's Bar and Grill. Except for I want to know what's happening after Jamie Stone goes away because we got more funny people coming up. I haven't even done a show yet, and I'm already yeah, gone. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Just real real business. Business. Uh, hey, can I have my check now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right now we're just... uh, our five dollar Friday is back uh, the thirtieth of uh, and the thirty first. We have Steve Caminiti, uh, funniest comic in Cincinnati, from funniest comic in Ohio. Steve's uh, always brings us gift or gets a gift from the club. Uh, he's the one who bought the fake fireplace. Yes. Oh, good. The one Thank who got you, the Mexican Steve. Velvet Elvis, the real yeah. Mexican Velvet Elvis, by the way, not an artificial. Oh, lay Mexican velvet. Yeah, uh, he always gets, not he the always made in Mexico. Uh, to you know, to put on display. So uh, the last time was, uh, you know, he, he used to do this bit about being the um, dork of comedy, ah. and he tries to pick up a girl from the stage, and it's like, hey, what's your favorite Jim Neighbors album? <laughs> so I, I remind him about the joke. I go, oh, no, Jim Neighbors joke. So he actually buys, goes to the thrift store, buys Jim Neighbors' greatest hits, and it's framed. And I put it right above John Lennon's poster. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just the people are like, what the fuck? If, you're really what the thr- fuck? If, yeah, yeah, if you've yeah. ever been to a thrift store, I guarantee there's 19 more copies. Oh, after. yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, it's thrifty. What are How Jim far are we going to stray off topic? Focus. Okay, back, back, back. Focus, Sorry. focus, focus. In this okay, case. Steve Caminiti. And then... Everyone. And then uh, our friend uh, Mike Toomey, uh, who's Mike big on Toomey, Toomey, funny Chicago, guy. News, funny guy. He does uh, he does a great Adam West, just Batman. He, uh, when I, they had Adam West on the news thing. They brought in Toomey as Batman to talk to Adam West. <laughs> <laughs> he also does Skip Parker. He's like a, a kind of a nerdy uh, sports guy, but he's a great comic. Um, he's here the sixth and seventh, and then. Uh, 
Valentine's Day weekend, uh, Darren will chirp in on this because Darren's going to do a uh, dinner show package with Prime Rib. Yeah. And our friend Jimmy McHugh is back with Derek Bennett. Hey! Yeah. Good, that'll, be yeah, a good, so, that'll be a good show. I think and now, that, uh, we have the, the Prime Rib special, so we're going to have... Uh, you bet. You can eat dinner over there, and then he'll get you the tickets and uh, just come on over, and uh, one package for everybody. Yeah, Prime yeah. Rib, hey, come on. Prime rib can't go wrong. Sounds like an awesome weekend to me. Yeah, chocolate dipped strawberries, <laughs> bottle of wine. We're gonna we're gonna treat you right. Make it a dinner date. Make it uh, make it a little romantic fun. Come on over, and get some laughs. Yep. So if you're uh, in love, come on over here. And, and, and wait till next week. Yeah, and if uh, you're uh, <laughs> you know what, if you're not in love, you probably pissed off your wife, and you need to do this anyway just to make you it make happen. it right. Make now it right. Have, uh, two, uh, funny female comics. The uh, f- funny female comics. At the end of the uh, month, uh, Sonia White. Sonia White, She's, uh, funny. Southern Fried Chick, CMT uh, yes. with Etta May yep. and Beth Donahue, and yeah, uh, very good. And then uh, Beth her, Donahue uh, is she still working? Uh, she's moved to LA, and no, she's not still working. Uh, too bad. I always liked her. Yeah, she's always been great to me. Yeah. Um, and then the very last week of February, uh, Denise Ramson, who is also a Wrigley Field beer vendor. <laughs> yeah, and baby. She is awesome. Kind of a, the Roseanne type. I mean, very opinionated. Very, uh, very. Uh, very Long Chicago woman. beer vendor yeah, yes. yeah, he's a Chicago it. kind of girl, you know. I got it. I got it. So I, that's, I, I get uh, it. but it's a great lineup, and uh, yeah. you can't you can't go wrong. Any of those shows are great. Jimmy McHugh, friend of the show, he's an awesome guy. guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, if you got a medical problem, you go see. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, can, you can do that. You can do that. The other day, I really wanted to use him, but he will uh, give you an educated guess. That's what he will give you. Exactly. He will give you an and honest, honest one of educated of course, guess. Uh, Jamie Stone, who. Uh, he was in Fort Wayne last weekend. I know, quit bragging, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? That's really? nice. Which is ironic, because last time he was here, That's I was in fun. Fort Wayne. Yeah. Very good. Exactly. I, I, can see I feel like one of us has to, I have to go to Fort Wayne now. They threw the so. clam signal up <clears throat> above uh, Fort Wayne. You, <laughs> you must go. So that is... I w- must go. I'm compelled. <laughs> that is WTF <laughs> at MCL. That's what's coming up. What the fuck at MCL? You just heard it. Jamie Stone. Steve Caminiti? Five dollar Fridays, same uh, weekend as Steve Friday, Caminiti, uh, uh, yeah. and then and again, there's a discount for Jamie. Mike Toomey. Uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned, go eat at Darren's. Yeah, come on, come on over, get the password to Smokies. I'll, I'll get you in half price. Yeah, I, know yeah, guy, had, I know a guy got a thing, right? I've had dinner there two nights in a row. It was awesome. Hey, well, so, thanks, uh, there's, there's Jamie, Jamie has a lots of great comedy. Hit, hit Chris in the lots ear of good food. Like no, 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 no. Darren, you want to talk about Smokies? Obviously, is a supporter of Gun Road Radio, and. You are the catering partner of Gone Rogue Radio, and you brought us something awesome tonight. You want to talk about that a little bit? As a request of uh, Derek, you know, I get this frantic text message, call me immediately. (laughs) Oh, I was killing Yeah, and uh, so I call it back. I'm here, I'm thinking someone's on fire. Someone needs something. It's it's bad. It's terrible. No, bring me this pizza burger in which they're speaking of. I've got a fever. And the only pizza burger. The only pizza pizza burger. Pizza burger. Well, uh, as a Mike Harrison, another friend of Smokey's and Gone Rogue Radio, probably listening tonight, shout out Mike, put it out to me a couple months ago about a walking horseshoe, which is a Springfield uh, horseshoe, is a local food that we like to eat, it's uh, cheese sauce, french fries, meat, well, I put one inside of a dough package and he, you know, good for you Mike, good call, well, being a dick the other day, he sent me this beautiful looking Pizza burger. Well, I had to make one, and actually, uh, it turned out rather well. The delicious flavors, it all comes together. It's, uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to just uh, brag about it, but it's like state fair kind of good. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it, it was. It was. It's like a stuff. It was as good as fried it's a butter. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, and it's stuffed with a big burger. It's, it's, it's stuffed with uh, with the prime rib uh, burger. Uh, you can get the pizza burger itself. It's a one third pound patty. But it looks like a pizza, not like a burger. It's well, a it's a, a burger inside. It's a pizza with a burger inside. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it's, 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 uh, so amazing. I made, I made the, uh, the the deluxe uh, pizza burger is a step up. It's a one size bigger. Now, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Can you give you that vegan with like a portobello mushroom? Uh, you know what, Chris? If I have the ingredients, if it's on my menu, no. I, I can make it. Yeah. I'm sure we have some vegans in the. Uh, uh, yeah, they're probably all in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Konnichiwa! <laughs> Konnichiwa, Japan! I love Japan. I love you Japan. You know, that might be a good transition. Okay, I've been okay. talking, I've been changing my diet to all organic. And Randy is here from Extreme Graphics who helped us put the SUV back together again the way it's supposed to be. 
Thank you, Randy. And thank welcome. you to Extreme Graphic Solutions in Springfield, Illinois. If you got any large scale and printing fuck you needs, to the deer or ran in front of deer. Yeah. Fuck you to Come the deer. Come on, do not get me fired up on the deer. <laughs> man. That was two shows ago. <laughs> Oh, if we have a revisiting shit, I got some other stuff to bring up. I need some. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Hectic event. You know? I mean, They're so trying many, to jump you know, the agenda. No, I'm just saying. I'm just fucking wound up right now. I'm, uh, too much. Too much mountain. Yeah, we my need coffee. a venison burger next. I didn't. I didn't know what you were talking about. So I'm sitting here like some sort of animal caught in the headlights. <laughs> a deer. Yeah, a deer that would be a deer. Deer and sucks. Total the graphics. Fuck the deer. Oh, we just uh, just finished. We just done. And the insurance company even told them, no, we're not going to fix that. And we told, you know, us and the body shop both said, no, the graphics are insurable. And yeah, got and they the were. insurance company to pay for it, and we re it real quick. We worked with the body shop, and before you knew it, he had his car back nice. in the road. We were driving around in a truck that said, like, one O-grad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is one O-grad? <laughs> that was not going to happen with me. So, I, And the insurance company, I want to point out, my insurance company was progressive, and they actually handled it well after the fact. I think this was an individual guy, and not out of malice. He didn't try to screw me over on the graphics at all. I think he was just half-assing it because he was covering for somebody else who was on vacation, and he wanted to get the hell out of there. Well, I think that might be something that not everybody knows. I mean, that's not something yeah. that you know he may come across every day. So just know that you know when you deal with your insurance. So that was a good experience for you or not? Eh, kind of 50-50 because he ended up non-renewing me because he said it was a commercial Oh, vehicle, man, which man, pissed that's, me that's off. Here. I'll yeah. never be able to jerk off the flow again. <laughs> <laughs> they paid us quick. And, uh, On to the Wendy's girl. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a joke in there about flow restricting flow. Or <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a terrible joke about asking you whether or not you went the one in the commercial or one on the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, you just made me cough. That's a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> I just made me cough my drink out of the that counter. Yeah, I know. Good to know that. I'm contemplating my question. Whoever I just sprayed with my drink, I'm so sorry about that. But <laughs> Extreme Graphics got us hooked up, got us taken care of, and we look great again. Uh, we got portholes coming still. That's the plan, right? Yeah, Eventually. Yeah, yeah. So if you see our vehicle rolling around, take a picture of it, and it'll do a couple things for you. First of all, if you get a picture of the treasure map on the side, you can show Chris on your phone, and he'll give you some sort of discount or uh, maybe or, or maybe an enchilada. Could be. There will be a leftover. And guacamole. He might even guacamole. give you some leftover Rice Krispie treat from somebody I'll else. I love leftover so. stuff there. I, I always have leftovers. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, Chris is awesome. A great cook in his own right alongside Derek. I have mentioned Derek Ben is my agent now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your enchiladas are always good. But I just... Get- Stiff competition. I come here, man. I, uh, I mean, how can you compete against Chris? Chris makes the bro? best lasagna I've ever had in my life. I come here for Chris's food, and I just do comedy for fun yeah. outside. <laughs> Chris makes a lasagna. Yeah, the show's are inside this week. I forgot to tell you. We've got a spotlight. We've got a club. <laughs> Much better than last we've time. We've got heat. <laughs> Chris's lasagna could yeah. be used to the treat him for revival. Really, I mean, <laughs> this is more of a comedy show. <laughs> Sorry, Chris's lasagna won't get you hard, but it could be used to treat impotence because you wouldn't care if you had sex again. It's that fucking good. It's I did. Uh, I did participate in the uh, soup, uh, 2015 soup and sweet. How'd that worked out. You told me about that. I missed out on that. Well, was you know, the, the thing is, I had the smallest container. Everybody had a fucking huge grocer kind of, you know, those you know yard long containers. And I had it's, a crock pot. It, it's got, not about. It's not about the size. And I, you were right. I was, I was the you. spiciest soup there. Very good. Everyone made cheese soup or chili. It seemed like there welcome to the of, welcome to the wood, welcome right. to the Midwest. And I made the white chili, and it went over fine. And 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 I sold everything I had, and but I wasn't going to win because I didn't have. And I don't know what you win. I don't think you win anything. But you know, whoever sold the most. You win the opportunity <coughs> to feed everybody in town for a buck. Whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Soup but I was a good well. experience, and uh, and I think I'd like to make my uh, my, my cousin makes the. Uh, at the grocery store in Louisiana, makes his own we'll sausage. And, Dewey, you and uh, Louisiana, sausage, yes. uh, Champagne's Marche. What is and, it? He's uh, giving a shout-out? <laughs> uh, Champagne's Marche. Yeah. It's sort of like Champagne, but it's Chom- Soft Day. Yeah. Chom- don't, don't hurt yourself, Chris. Oh, yeah. oh, well. But speaking, uh, speaking uh, I'll make a gumbo next year. We're speaking to friends. Nice. That sounds good. Anyway, I highly recommend Chris's food. If you ever get the chance to come to Mason City, say, hey, what would it take to get upstairs? Well, get, he's got very reasonable, reasonable terms. <laughs> very uh, reasonable terms. Get you upstairs. Yeah, you buy the comedy club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you, 
people have the upstairs. A comedy called Aunt Lasagna. <laughs> An awesome deal. And Chris yeah. has also got this product called beer. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tons right. of it. Yeah. We do lots of drink specials out here. Yeah. And it makes everything so much more funnier. It's great. Yeah, we have a one drink minimum. It doesn't have to be alcohol, but we're funnier if it is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, it, does that include uh, the comedian, by the way? Intros. As much as I want. We should do some intros to let people know who's here in addition to the people we've already mentioned. We covered Randy, our graphic Darren, artist, Darren Marcel, resident. We've covered yeah. uh, James Stone, uh, our friend. Almost. Uh, we could probably mention him a little bit more in depth. I don't yeah, know. Sure. He's not that. Uh, you know, he's some not. guys are assholes. Jamie's not an asshole. No, he's he's sitting right next yet. to an asshole. I haven't had enough to drink yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a few yeah, more. Yeah, in one hour, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Countdown. Time check, time check. And where I'm really going with this. Put the, <laughs> Give me 60 nice. minutes on the clock, please. Like a grandma, man. 60 We're minutes. Feed him some we started it out nice, and then after an hour and then nine whiskeys, he wasn't as funny. I know this is a long way around the barn, but I know if we get Jamie talking, eventually he's going to say something that's going to piss off Christina, and the rest of us know what will happen. We can just stand back and watch. I haven't met Christina yet. Well, you will. Love and I'm you. sure that hopefully Darren will say something offensive <laughs> and you can Red flag over here. So should I just do that now and get it out of the way? <laughs> we can relax the rest of the show. Do you have any conservative opinions at all? I have uh, none. Oh well, then that's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. fine. Well, oh, you two will end up in bed together. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a couple of fucking you know. Are you kidding me? I took a test online and it said I should have Stalin living in my backyard. That's what that, that's that's how liberal I am. Very good. All right, I'll give you that Stalin, huh? Jeez, I can't beat that. But all right, not so liberal, more like dictatorship. Should I just spend the rest of show? Should I just spend the rest of show talking like this? Hello, hello, Jamie Stone. How are you? It's good to be here. Where do you go from here, Jamie? After you leave Mesa City, what's the next You're year? Where are you going? We got two shows coming up, and you already saying. I know. Oh, <laughs> Chris is already talking about who's here next week. You're trying to get yeah, me the fuck out. Of here. I'm just curious. Uh, from here, I'm going to be at Joey's Comedy Club in Livonia, outside of Detroit. I'm going to have to drive through the shittiest part of Detroit, otherwise known as Detroit. And, um, <laughs> and then I go home, and then I am in rehearsals all of March. I'm doing a show called Laughter on the Twenty Third Floor. It's a show by Neil Simon. And I play a Russian comedy writer named Val ah, Slavsky. So for an entire month of March, I will be talking like this and driving everybody there. Did you, did you have uh, uh, an accent coach help you with your... Yeah, I just want to say it's the best Yakash Murnoff in prison. Yeah, I was going to say it again. Fucking nailed it. Nailed it. No, my, my coaches for accent were grandparents that came from Russia and up in oh, Poland that talk like that. And, that, and all, how many times you have to listen to you? Shut mouth and do homework. <laughs> and then eventually you'll learn you to talk. You pick like up on the whole language. You pick up on the whole language. Like like certain few so, well, the sentences. funny thing is, you know, they go to language, uh, they go to linguists for 25 years, and then after 25 years, they actually just start to talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get to be about 86 and they talk like that. And that's the people you hear. Shut up, you bastard. I'm going. Yeah, that's the best they get after that's 50 years in this country. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's yeah, the best. start yelling. It's yeah. Channels. It's Once it's, it goes yeah. up and acting, yeah, you bastard, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> that's how you know. And then you ask them, what's for breakfast? They go, bagels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell how much trouble you were in with the, the pitch of the voice. Absolutely. The and when they started yelling at you in Polish and Yiddish and Russian is when you knew you were screwed. Wow, wow, yeah. really. Oh, and, well. and, uh, and, uh, Jamie is a Jewish, but you how do you classify yourself? I am, I am, uh, I am oh, Jewish. You know what? I was, <laughs> I, was, I was fascinated by the levels. You, you know, look at this. I just got converted by Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, no, yeah. Chris is funny. No, the, the levels. Of he's not even a Jew, and he's <laughs> like, we, I talked to the rabbi. Yeah, yeah, like, you're in, man. You're in. Yeah, you're man, talk about you. this, the levels of Judaism, the Hasidic. Okay, Jews wait a second. Keep well, no, in that, mind, keep in mind where you're headed here, and keep in mind that we have the granddaughter of an imam. Right here as well. I mean, what are we gonna like? You gonna ward out? Right <laughs> now, Let's get ready to rumble. Look, no, 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 no. I would like to. Hey, I, I would like to say this. If, if you know what, uh, let's let's clear this up right here and now. There is no religious. That is intrinsically evil. Yeah, we don't give a shit about religion here. That's what <laughs> 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 he, he was about to say something sort of profound. 
Well, that's that's why I put some pressure on me right now. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. What it is is this. No, like you show up with microphone, I show up with bagel, we have lunch. <laughs> you know, it's a better German accent than I do any other, so. Uh, oh, that's kind of. I do that of my people. Wow, that's kind of ironic. <laughs> wait, wait, what I, what I, what I was going to say is there, there, is no, there is no religion on this planet that is intrinsically evil. It no, the Catholics, Catholics are fucking evil. Oh, All right. Right. So, yeah, I got to disagree, man. I got family and friends that are Catholic, too. I got friends and family that are Catholic, and they're the most laid back. Yeah, but you know, they're, 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 they're the ones that are like, you know what? They're the ones that are They're the most possessed. Yeah. Not, no, not, not most of them anymore. You talk to Catholics, and you're like, you believe the world was created in seven days, and they're like, what are you, a fucking moron? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about that kind of evil. Do you really? I do. Uh, my, my, uh, uh, the priest, on my dad's side, the uh, priest. Michael Sean Pine, he's a Catholic priest. He does hospice work in uh, Louisiana. <laughs> you, were gonna tell me. you know, the weird thing is, he took a vow of poverty. He drives a nice car than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but did he pay for it? Yeah, but he didn't take the, pow- the, the vow like of the comedy. It's like the company car. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He took the vow of yeah, comedy, yeah. which entitles you to and drive I gotta fit that all those piece of shit. In my car. <laughs> And then my uh, aunt is uh, was in the Philippines for oh, about oh, they put her in five years on one year off but for thirty years she was in the Philippines <laughs> she got parole so yeah, none? Parole, yeah. <laughs> when, she was over there during the you know uh, when he said he had a, a oh, priest and a nun in his room it was scared to death he was gonna say my <laughs> mom and dad were <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh wow uh, Chris. Uh, I want to clarify my <laughs> I want to clarify my Catholics are evil comment because sure. not all Catholics individual Catholics are I'm, I'm sure, sure great people, people. Involved when you get them by themselves they're the people involved they're a network two or more, two two or more no, Catholics together you're fucked you know what I don't think religion means shit I think that's kind of ironic that you said you're fucked I want to re after she shuts up, I'll revisit. Oh, <laughs> Are you going to read fan comics if you want people to shut up? <laughs> I'm go sorry. On. Go ahead. I, I, I just thought it was ironic. Sorry, go ahead. Can you talk a little bit? Because I'm talking so fucking much, guys. Can't you hear me? If you Keep get going. two or more Catholics in the same room, you have a network of Catholics, and then you're <laughs> fucked. You're That's fucked. what he said. <laughs> you're fucked. Which is ironic if you happen to be an altar boy. That's a problem. I mean, he, that, I'm Episcopalian, which is exactly like Catholicism, yeah, Catholic minus the kid fucking. So right. exactly. I, mean, I know exactly. that you know of. Yeah. Pedophiles are everywhere. Like it's, it's hey. not a religion thing. Hey, hey, hey. It's a fucking dirty ass old man thing. I mean, like, let me tell you about uh, Catholicism. I will say it's, it's that a I can. Thing, I like, can confess my oh sins. I'm washed clean yeah. next, next fucking <laughs> Sunday. I'm good to go. There's a lot of bullshit about the Episcopal Church, and I will readily admit that there are problems. But we have a liberal faction in the church and a conservative faction, and the liberal part of the Episcopalian Church is very liberal. And very accepting. And uh, women are ordained. Gays are accepted. There's very little discrimination in that portion of the church. And I think some of those people have it right. You know, doesn't matter what brand you put on it. If you think that we shouldn't hate gay people, you're fucking right. You know, if you think that women ought to be able to talk about their beliefs without being restricted in a church, you're fucking right. You know, so there are certain religions and certain churches that got certain parts right, and then there are a whole bunch of them. Hey, listen, I think I think I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to say this: every religion has got it right. Every religion has got it right. It is the men that interpret it that get it right. I I, I know. I don't don't think so. I'm not going to lie, and I and I also think that you have to think of like a lot of these, like the Lutheran Church. We're Lutherans. Like, um, there's the Missouri Synod and the Evangelical Lutherans. Evangelical Lutherans allow women to prophecy or whatever, whatever they call it. Like, they are much more open. Uh, it's, it's like a turning point in history. Like, you have all these social mores and things that are changing, and religion has always <coughs> been kind of behind. Like, well, recently, not always, because it used to kind of be, like, fucking cutting edge. But, like, now it's kind of, like, lagging behind a bunch of shit like science and society. They so, you'll see it. On the... No, 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 not always. You know, the more... that is, no, that is not true. There, 
can Google it right the now. Church There's is always stuck Catholic up. Catholic all right, Christ. God damn it, stop. I do not want to talk about religion all night. Yeah, yeah. I got news we for have you. other things we got to talk about. I got news about. for you. Here's, here's my commentary on this. If you have a problem with gays, blacks, and Jews, I don't want to come to your party because it's going to suck. Amen, yeah. brother. Yep. If you have a problem with anybody Agreed. on a fundamental level, like, thing. And, and, no in our so. crowd, there's going to be no gays, black uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you don't uh, But it, this party won't suck. No, yeah. it won't. It yeah. won't. Yeah. Wait, we're doing the best we can without the gays, blacks, and we've Jews. got oh, all kinds me. of drama already. <laughs> we got one third, yeah. got one third of that covered. The levels of Judaism. We are far from being normal, however. I mean, this is. No, whoa, 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 I, think that, I think that subject got surpassed twenty minutes ago. Wait, I'm not, I'm, I am not that far from being normal. I am I'm probably the most normal oh guy God. in the fucking room. I look around. You know, I hear the Raiders are moving back to Oakland. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. I mean, that is bullshit. Subject change for calling himself normal. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! God damn, I can't believe he just throws that shit out there. Hey, it's fucking radio. They can't see me. <laughs> they can't fucking see me. I can tell them whatever. Konnichiwa. <laughs> like the fucking. I'm a plumber in like 30 years. That's no, 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 no. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 19 year old Chinese guy. Actually, Darren kind of looks the way Billy Joel does right now. Hey, I'm an innocent man. An innocent man. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm an innocent man. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm an innocent man. 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 Yeah, I'm an innocent all right, let's start talking about some topics that we wanted to get to tonight. Uh, okay, okay. I want. I got one. No, I have them already written. It's not your oh, I can right. see them. Yeah, that's right. We, we talked the about them earlier. We talked it's about the man show. Let them. I'd talk. like to make a comment. I actually on the first have topic. a topic that's designed for you. <laughs> I do. I Does do. this topic have anything to do with Michael Moore being a fucking moron? No, nothing to do with that okay. at all. That'll be douchebag of the week section. You already know what that is. That'll be my douchebag of the week. For a little I just bit. want to put that up there to guys. That's a preview. Oh, is this a topic? You're, you're a douchebag of the week? Yeah, yeah we don't always do. I don't I give a fuck. fuck. <laughs> that guy's a moron. You can think of one. On I'm, the I'm the liberal in the room, so if you want to talk to me, just No, you're not. Okay. No, you're not. Well, I'm one of the liberals in the room. Just wait. Yes, sir. Just wait until you see what happens shortly. I'm going to throw a bomb out there, and it's going to hit, and then... I'm going to step back. You're going to step Should back. Should I go get some air freshener? Nope. You can oh, take kind of a couple of steps away from the counter and just okay. watch that, this that's show. That's not a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> And you should have this mic pointed at your mouth because I'm sure you're going to eat it. Oh, she's going to do We do. All right, all right here's a we simple. We've broken bread. Okay, here is a peaceful topic. Oh, uh, old beers. We were talking previous to the show about old beers. Not good beers necessarily, but <laughs> shit you used to drink back in the day. Before the microbrewery. Before, right. yeah. You before know what? Good beer. You made it. These would be cheap beer. Yeah. Well, it could be. Could be. Yeah. We're, uh, well, unless you, you, know, you make a, a comment, old beers, it doesn't have to be a good beer. No, I not think at all. everybody's taste varies on a beer, so it could have been good to somebody. The, the one beer that came up that's the current old beer. Schlitz. Stag. Stag. Stag, yeah. Stag is still, out there. Yeah, I'll still get cans of Stag. Yeah. 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 <laughs> way to go. I don't know why that just sounded filthy. I don't know why. Yeah, back in my day, I used to get cans of stag there, but then I got married, you know, and uh, then I had to then I had to slow it down a little bit, you know. And every once in a while, one of them cans of stag calls me up and go, "I'm sorry, I'm retired. I can't do that shit anymore." So you know, I. Uh, Teenager, and you're outside some bonfire. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. oh, oh you said something. Allegedly, yeah, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly drink underage. Allegedly drink I underage. I may have underage. done that. We would not condone that activity. I may have done that in my past in an alternate. Yeah, universe. but this show does not condone anyway, underage drinking. Oh, matter of fact, we I'm don't really talking. condone drinking. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. tell your story. Okay, we get it. Stag. I'm just saying, it's we'll the kind of beer you would have, you have in that sort of setting. Is this going to end with... Of age. Is this going to end with you having three beers and getting felt up outside of a bonfire? That's what I want to know. That's my no, story. You drink it responsibly you the as well. Story. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, because if that was uh, you, I'm really you sorry know, I, that that I, happened. I could have been alive in the 70s when you were able to drink at 18, so 
What do these people know? We're talking yeah, about right. glass beers. Yeah, right. They don't know my face. <laughs> you, look like, you, look like, you look like the kid that was at my door selling Girl Scout cookies last week. You know, I don't say he was alive in the 70s. Right? I want to go straight to the bottom of the barrel real quick because we're not already there. We can get lower. <laughs> I'm awesome. going to improve the quality. Um, back in the 80s, we used to drink um, a beer in a yellow can Scotch buy. that just said beer. That was and Scotch used to buy buy them generic. Them. Yeah, they had like warehouse stores where yes. you could get all kinds of generic, well, generic products. products. So it just and said they had, beer on it. I was going to tell you. Oh, oh, yeah. Bright oh, yellow oh, can. Oh, I can remember allegedly, allegedly we were in, uh, I think, junior high, <laughs> giving my brother 20 <laughs> bucks back in the day. Twenty dollars yeah. back in the day yeah. to go get us some beer, and he brought us like nine cases of Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the day, it was like the most beer we'd ever seen in my life, and it was like, oh, we were in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. We, were, we, we were in junior high school. We started ripping this stuff over, and it tastes exactly like dirty ass. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. as fast as you That's can. Right. Right. Like, oh, I'm getting sick, but I'm still drinking because look how much warm, beer we right? have, and look, we know it's beer because it says. Beer. <laughs> beer. What are you drinking? Beer. Yeah, thank you, Todd Smith. Shout out to my brother, Todd, you dick. That, that, I'm still sick over there. That stuff had a place, though. I mean, you could use it like we used to get a case of Coors, which back then we talked before the show. Sure. Coors was like a quality sure. beer. Uh, I so, grew up uh, just outside the, yeah. the brewery. Here, here yeah, in yeah, Illinois, you couldn't get it. Yeah, it, was it was hard to get. So... Yeah. If we would buy. You would buy your champagne. It was oh, way before the bacon. silver. Bill. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, way before the gold but can. That's why yeah, gold can. Here was the silver and silver. No, no, no. It, then you started seeing you're breaking the here. breaking the strike. But this is <laughs> like <laughs> mid '80s. I'm talking yeah. about when you got uh, the. If you found it, it was in the brown can, and we would buy a case of that, and then we'd buy two cases of that, that generic shit. Uh, so we drink the case of Coors first, up when you said that. Uh, slam that case of Coors, and get drunk really fucking quick, and then you could drink that other shit the rest of the night, and it was oh cool. Yeah. You, you, know, could, you could, if you, you maintain your buzz, you, you can drink that. <laughs> shit. There, there's a way, there's a way better drinking philosophy going here. Oh, uh, here's the pro. Oh wait, wait. Just okay, so I'm Nick. standing next to my 270. Pound Slavic friend. Right? <laughs> He's gonna tell me about drinking. Go, friend. Well, well, first off, I got blats in the can, and I was on antibiotics for three weeks. But, <laughs> uh, uh, but sorry to blats. Allegedly, uh, it may not have had. A ma- it may have been a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to get sued by blats. This whole conversation is alleged. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're related. I'm just making a statement. There are two things you can't do. You can't talk about blats, and you can't talk about Scientologists. Either one of those will get fucking sick. Hang on. Shut this down. Shut this down. I'm moving on. Okay. Here's the drinking philosophy. You mean mean Tom Cruise? I have to cancel Tom Cruise next week? Too too much liability. I don't have the insurance for that. So what you do is you find the hot chick that you're, that, like, some guys are trying to get her drunk. So what you do is you go, oh, hey. You know, I know one. Well, see, what you do is you go, We're I, don't on. See, I don't want to see you get drunk, but I will take your <laughs> drinks and replace them with my empties. So basically, I'm drinking some, like, yuppies, you know, good beer. You know, he can't figure out why she's, you know, sober as a nut. That's really right. fucking devious, dude. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is really fucking devious. And I hey. haven't spent a dime. Hey, that you know goes against guy code. Why? Because you protected some woman from potentially being sexually no, assaulted. I, I, I don't <laughs> give a shit about her. I'm getting free beer. That's I didn't say you I wanted to. I'm not that nice like, of a person. <laughs> Minus points to Jeff Kavendick. The first time in the history of the show... That anyone other than Darren has received minus <laughs> points. We now have Jeff Kavednik is number two on the list. He's way behind Darren. Oh, and he just picked up, up some minus way. points for being a total douchebag and getting <laughs> free drinks. But I love that's you a, anyway. Yeah. I love that's you anyway. Well, guy I mean, code, one part of that story is a guy who was, who was doing it got a DUI. Oh, oh, man. That guy thought he was getting laid. And you fucked that up. Oh, wait, he no, got, he got fucked. You don't worry about it. <laughs> you don't 
worry about that guy. He got <laughs> and I got drunk. It was a little lit. All right, right. I gotta say, what the fuck? Let's all get right. back on point. Here. All right. Where's Where's right? I just got back from the bathroom. All I heard is late and get back on point. So what, what did I miss? I, I had a stuff. I got an urgent phone call from Doctor Gonzo. He had one question for me. Okay, Gonzo. But I have Polly Shore anytime. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. I said yeah, whatever, man. Yeah. What? Really? Polly Shore. You said yeah, yes. Yeah, fuck yeah. He's a you fucking really? douchebag. I would love. To we can make him douchebag in a week when he's here. Yeah, look at him. He's a douche. douche. <laughs> he would never be a douche. douche. He would I, not I, like as cool as Jamie so. I heard he hears this. I've never worked with him. I can't say one way or the other. I know a bit. I really? hope that he doesn't listen to everything that all you assholes are saying. <laughs> 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 you that you're off the he's, 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 heard heard he's heard it all. Yeah, yes. he's heard it all. But I mean, I mean he's, whatever. I mean, he's not my favorite comic in the world. But I mean, he would draw people in, and probably draw people in who've never been here before. Right. He would they draw people in, him. but that's kind of, you know that's oh my I'm oh that hurts my heart. That hurts. I have a book on that. Book hey, 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 that might be the enchiladas. <laughs> It might be the enchilada. Sit down, friend. Sit down. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. We're still working on Rob Schneider. We're still working out the dialogue to get Rob there. Schneider. I can oh, see. We got to go back to the beer can because I had to step away. Uh, the beer thing. Uh, here's how old I am. Okay. We used to collect beer cans. Yes. <laughs> During yes. 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 My brother has 800 beer cans in his fucking ass. Yes, and then we collect them. I mean, it was like every. Who that one? I got that one. The, the big the, thing would be if you get a cone top. We had one cone top. Really? Whole black. Only one? Yeah, it wasn't even beer. It was called Gum Out. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you guys? You remember what the from, fuck? Or they were pull tabs? Or they were, like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The peel tabs? But uh, we're talking about beers, right? And uh, we're talking about cheap beers. <laughs> and we're not and I had to step away, so I wanted to kind of contribute. Oh, <laughs> well, that was a great contribution. Yeah, here we go with a cheap beer, beer story from Well, my from dad was a Stroh's man. Remember oh, Stroh's? Oh, Stroh's. The only, yeah. only fire-brewed beer. Yes. They made a big deal fire-brewed about that. It was fire-brewed, and, and it was it was uh, come with its own alarm system. And <laughs> <laughs> no, Nobody's going to steal your Stroh's, are they? <laughs> You, you, no. open, you open a can and that smoke alarm goes off. <laughs> I get you. I get you. Let's see what you did there. And that was brewed in what city? Uh, Seattle. Detroit, Michigan. Oh, really? Oh. Detroit was in... College of Detroit. Yeah. yeah. That's probably why. Okay, let's, off let's all sing the Detroit theme song. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Make the sound of burning buildings. Yeah, that's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> and to finish up, <laughs> and, and another one, of course, uh, Iron City was out of Pittsburgh. It was a cheap yes, beer, yes, right? It was a cheap beer. I went home, uh, uh, you know, we used to drink cheap beer in college. A friend of mine from college goes, Hey, let me buy you a beer. <laughs> he buys me a pot. Blue Ribbon. PBR, what? PBR. Yeah. That was right in the Dude, that's, no dude, that's the hipster beer. That's the hipster beer. His line was like, hey. That's the hipster beer. His line was like, hey. Yeah, they're drinking of, it. Never mind. Really? PBR <laughs> Toll Boys, man. If you got a big. If you, <laughs> like, if you, if you yeah. want to cut his mic. Hey, man, if you got a big bushy beard, <laughs> buddy holly glasses, and a wraparound scarf, you got a PBR in your hand. That's the hipster beer. That's been the hipster beer for a couple of years now, PBR man. PBR is dirt. What about Natty Lights? Uh, so I, I, be dirty with the I haven't seen him yes. drink that. Okay. All right. Natty is very redneck, very hillbilly. I mean, hey, now it is. I got it. What? If, you're, is a, if yeah. you're living in a town of 350 people or less, you're probably drinking Natty Light. I got well, you know, Here's the thing about those kind of beers like PBR. The reason they drink them because they are ironically cool. Oh, that t- I, I, exactly. I forget it, it's, about it, No, but I mean, it's it's ironically only, cool. Aaron, it's not cool. It's ironically cool. Like Olympia work that beer. matches your girlfriend's. That's ironically cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Olympia beer was real big Side back bar. in the uh, back out west. Olympia beer. Was I would big. remember Three, buying Olympia for two ninety nine a case. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it was very it was very hip amongst the uh, out west. We had the three two bars eighteen go drinking. Uh, Olympia beer. I mean, See, I'm, get, it was it was a dollar dollar a pitcher, I believe. Dollar yeah. a pitcher night. See, I'm out of my I'm out of my league on this conversation because I didn't start drinking beer until all the snobby breweries came around. Yeah. So what I did is I started with microbreweries and I worked my way back to Bud Light, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a good idea, yeah. especially recently. Ever since they were acquired by Amstel, 
They right. um, there's a huge article about this, and you can Google it anywhere. If you're a Bud drinker or you liked uh, anything that was made by Bud, you should find out what happened after they were acquired, because the ingredients changed in your Budweiser, the amount sure. of alcohol changed that was in your Budweiser, sure they did. and the quality of the ingredients changed. You bet. In order to make more money. So, if you're a Bud drinker and you noticed a change in your Budweiser a few years ago, there's a reason, and it's called corporate profit. Greed. Explain that to me, sir. What's this about? Budweiser was sold by AB in St. Louis to a company that also owned beer makers overseas in Europe. And after it was acquired, the, the ingredients that went into the making of Budweiser were changed to less quality. There were people here in the United States that were like hops people. They were producing right. hops for Budweiser. And it was this guy. The only person, you know, they were making a very specific, very quality product. And then when they were acquired, that guy was fired and his product was no longer needed. And he had no other market to sell it to because Budweiser was his only customer. But that's what gave Budweiser its distinctive flavor. Right. Was the particular hops. And it wasn't not the particular hops. But it was the soil that this genome of hops was grown in. It was a specific type of hop grown in specific soil. Did right. we just use the word genome on the show? That is we awesome. did. It's amazing. Usually we awesome. talk about anal oh, wait, wait, and shit. This is like so... Hey, Jamie, I want to thank you for pointing out the point that I might fucking lose points here in a fucking minute for using a word that somebody else might not know. I've just been fucked. But, you know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. No, no, that, that, and, that, that, and that's and I tell you what, in, in the in the in the in the craft of beer making, there are specific ingredients needed to make specific flavors. How long you cook your hops? How long? How long it's brewed? How if it's filtered? It's not. If it's temperature. The, and the yeast, the yeast strain will make the beer as well too. No, it, there's there's different you know kinds of yeast. But what what Derek was saying about this corporate greed? He's coming out here and he's saying that that. You know, money has changed the craft. Now, it, it is no longer a craft of flavor. It is a craft of money. We are going to take right. a big brewery, and we are going to make it bigger. Right. And I'm not going to make it bigger by, you know, selling a solid product that has been solid for 150 years. Right. I'm going to make, I'm going to sell this product um, at, a, at a wider profit margin due to the fact that I'm using... Cheaper or market hops rather than Joe Blow's hops because. But they fucked up because what they did was they changed the ingredients in a market where other people were getting into the industry. Exactly. Microbreweries and special craft exactly. items. And, Keep going. And that has hurt Budweiser's bottom line and, and all the associated beers that are owned by that company have all taken a hit because their quality went down at the same time as these smaller brewers are coming into the market I'm and not, offering a, a local product or a regional product or even in some cases a national product and they're cutting away at a market that's dominated by a company that obviously doesn't give a shit about the consumer. So well, at, some, at some point they're going to learn the le hopefully they will learn the lesson because that's, the, water, thing, that's the thing of business. If you keep watering down your product until it's more and more crappy, until it's complete and utter shit, you're eventually going to lose out. It's a bell curve. You're going to start uh, making more and more money by saving. Don't, don't, and then eventually don't, don't give me the bell curve when it comes to beer. Don't give me the nobody. Nobody is going to fit within the beer uh, model. I tell you what, I'm selling product right now in my restaurant uh, from a from a Kona. It's a, it's a, they're longboard. Uh, it's very delicious, very aromatic, long finish, stout beer. Uh, I sell an urban wheat out of uh, Missouri down here. Boulevard has a brewery down there. So right. it, 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 this is not a click. This is not a passing phase. These people have very, very specific exactly. recipes 
that they've put out an authentic flavor. Yep. I'm talking about not this. It, it is not a generic. And I, I'm talking about bell curve on profit. No, I want to. I'm talking about if you keep cutting you, profits, you're going to make more and more money, and then eventually you're going to your quality is going to be so shitty, people aren't going to want to trust you anymore, and they're going to start. Right. But, start but what it is, and I'm going to point you to a million products that are for sale at Walmart right and now. And to your right. point, I, I agree that Walmart I do not have an economy an exception, but we're not going to get <laughs> into Walmart tonight because we don't have that kind of time. Yeah. But what I will point out is. That businesses do go away. You know, if consistently you offer a shitty product in a market where there are great products, businesses can fail. And you see that all the time. You know, big box stores fucking fail. Go under. You no on. more. That's, what, go that's, what, I'm, that's what I was trying to get at. I don't know if I made how myself many, clear. How many yeah. centurion companies do we have out there that still offer the product that made them? Right. Wrigley gum. Or right. on hammer detergent. These are people that have stuck around, stuck to the basics, brought you a right. product that made them money and and lasted with right. it. They've introduced other stuff around that, but they have the well, they, they have the basic. They go back to it. But there are places that got shitty on their quality and they're no longer in business anymore. And you can probably find those in your neighborhood. You probably know places. That the, restaurants the one that's for sale. The, you know yeah. that old restaurant, the one that's for sale? Exactly. Uh, you know, whatever. They, they, you know, it, it impacts the big yep. thing. Don't fuck up your brand by the way, by, you know. For Don't stop giving profit. a shit. Check out, hey, go to any Chinese buffet that opens up the first week they're in business and then go back six months after the <coughs> year. The <coughs> food quality has gone completely Subway tanky. Restaurant it's like a little has, microcosm. Has a it, is in their, it is in their business model to load you up at 13% more product the initial four months that they are open. So every sandwich you own is not longer, but it has just that much more weight to the sandwich. After they open and they get people in the routine of coming there and used to this, then you can cut start cutting back. back. Yeah, absolutely. So then the profit margin widens and they do it forever. So there's also a life expectancy of a market like this, of a product like this. Right. When they when you go in there and you, you skim all the profit off the top at the beginning, there is no longevity to business. Right. Uh, there's it's Corporate greed. Skills. Yeah, and eventually yeah. people get hip to that kind of shit because I, you see it happen in restaurants where somebody will come in and take over a new restaurant and they'll cut, 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 yep, yep, and exactly. then after a while people go, God, man, this food sucks. I'm not eating I here anymore. The and they've made a lot of, they've saved a lot of money on food costs and a lot of money on labor. And after a while, the service sucks and the food sucks, and people don't want to eat there anymore. There's a, there's a, there's a, a Mason Dixon line of cutting and expenses what? where you will eventually fuck yourself over if you're not careful. Well, well, it's you know, pretty low. Look at Hooters. There's still some stuff. <laughs> I don't. I don't go into Hooters. I don't go anywhere near Hooters. The last time I went to Hooters, I was under duress, and I couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. I want to make. I want to make this clear right now. I'm a huge fan of Hooters. I love Hooters. Oh no, no, we're talking about the restaurant, right? If we're talking about the restaurant, I'm now I'm talking about the restaurant. I would like to uh, make a disclaimer right now. I don't care for the restaurant, but I do like my boobies. I worked at one. I like my boobs, and it's horrible. You worked at Hooters for six months. Not one tip, did you, fat boy? <laughs> you know what? You are not me. getting tips. What? I'm just saying. <laughs> well, well, you didn't get a tip. I don't think they let him serve in the board top hand. Oh, hey, man. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. I didn't can, know. Can you hey, man, can we? I thought you were out there trying yeah, to fucking. Yeah. Can, we, the can we open up a restaurant called, like, Nutsos or Sacks, and the guys expose just their testicles, and they walk yeah. around in tight little pants with their Sacks, balls hanging right. out, and women come in there just to stare at them? Can we do that? You scare me. <laughs> I'm just saying, you like scare me. I know. I was waiting for him to say, you scare me, but I'm in. <laughs> no, I'm out right now. I'm, I was exposing my testicles as needed. It's a whole different meaning to giving, a, giving an employee the sack. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that was stupid. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> that wasn't stupid. No, that was... Uh, I noticed all conversation just came to a grinding halt. You the curve. I totally think that people will just buy crap. I know that people in general buy crap. They buy. They get into a rhythm. They buy things yeah, that they're that have no life to them because they're thinking things expendable. Like, anybody, they, anything's expendable. Sure, I mean, uh, and you it, don't it's drink it's to enjoy a beer. It's, you it's drink to get drunk, or you, you don't buy that. You like it out of forever. habit. You like it out of habit. I think it depends on age group because you know what? When you're younger, you drink to get drunk. Sometimes when people start getting a better palate, I think they start actually drinking beer they like. You know, I think you get to a certain point where you go, you know what, I, when I you're you 20, might... you'll drink anything you want. But when you're like 40, 50, 60 years old, you know, you know, I only got 10 or 20 years left. I don't want to drink this shit anymore. I want to enjoy myself. Okay. Yeah. Speak yourself. Be I'm, I'm getting, all the time. Curves, I'm getting like too old to drink shit. Like income curves, because I know people that be drinking Natty Light till they die. 
So. Okay, well, <laughs> counting down the topic ending, it just ran out. I think uh, it ran out 10 minutes ago. Points to Christina. <laughs> oh, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, we're a little kind of points to Randy because Randy's been in the area. Um, points to Christina. She made some great points. <laughs> points to Jamie Stone for hitting on a couple of great liberal topics again. Thank you for not... <laughs> Thank you for not conflicting with the chick who does great conflict. I really appreciate it if you would get with the program a little bit. Um, <laughs> should we trade seats? Should I go sit next to you? And we, can, we, can, we can draw a line down the middle of the counter. All right, hold on. I'm not done. Uh, negative points to Darren for whatever. Uh, Bradley the Brain just showed up. Thanks, Brad. Brad, you're going to help me out here, man. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm getting my... Yes. <laughs> Frank, yeah. Frankly, you don't have Apparently to be sure what's going he on. He wasn't pugilistic enough. So you need some enough. backing for your argument? And I, wanna, <laughs> I think we need a voice of sanity to take us to another subject. Okay, I need a yeah. transition here for just a second. Sure. And this is something that we've talked about before. Um, today is Caden Gulledge's birthday. Yeah. And yeah, we know about Caden was murdered by his daycare provider oh my uh, shortly before his first birthday. Um, and really, yeah, not good thing. And the trial, which we had expected the trial date to come up soon, and I thought even today would be an opportunity to tell you guys that have you, some of you have been following along as we've been talking about this, and since we interviewed Becky, Caden's mom, um, the trial date has now been pushed back, apparently because defense medical experts are not prepared to go to trial when they were supposed to. Now, was this the expert that was in trouble in Europe? Uh, I hope not, because if it I is, I'm like, going to blast off about because that. Because if they're, if they're delaying it because of her, then that's just ridiculous. Right. But her medical license is on the line forever over there in right. Europe. Right. Like, if she's convicted of uh, misleading courts intentionally, she's never going to practice medicine again in Europe. And mm -hmm. she's been rejected soundly by a bunch of European courts as a defense expert. They won't even hear her talk. Well, so if she's the defense ex medical expert, and that's why I have a delay in the trial. I just don't ever see this going anywhere. Well, I, m no. I may be mistaken, but I thought that that, that testimony wasn't going to be. Did I see a post? Right. That that there w cannot be a fry hearing about the admissibility of. Uh, the medical evidence on shaken baby. Right. So they can't keep any of that out, any of those injuries. Those can't be removed because the court accepts that shaken baby syndrome is a real phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what they were saying. Right. The defense tried to say that shaken baby syndrome wasn't real, doesn't exist, and they tried to get, they tried to go for the score immediately by trying to get this fry hearing to get that taken out. The other thing that he tried to get taken out was the confession that the bitch gave at the hospital while she wasn't under arrest right. and didn't require Miranda rights to be advised. She was never under arrest at the hospital, and she told him what happened. Right. And the defense tried to get that tossed, being the shady bastards that they are. Because she wasn't so, under arrest, but that, she, that doesn't matter if it was witnessed by somebody that wasn't a law enforcement Right, a person or a person of the court. Well, lots of people saw the shit that she was doing at the hospital. No, she killed this kid. Right. Jesus. Anyway, right now they're Kane's trying to. Right they're, now they're trying to play out the clock. Maybe she'll die without going to prison. You know, she's really old. They're so, playing all the games. Right. They're the trying time. to trying to you keep her out as long as they can. Blame ourselves for allowing this type of uh, laws to be written. Yeah, and don't, they, don't get me wrong. Like I think due process needs to be a thing. Absolutely, um, but four years. Well, let's not. But, but, due process is due process, but I think we've allowed it the the waters to be so muddied on on due there process. Is, there there is, is something wrong with our justice system. Yeah, why why do we have people on death row for twenty years? The, why 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 why? There is no reason that this infant and his memory should be tarnished by four years without even a trial date, without even an right. expectation of justice for him. That's bullshit and it's not fair. And I don't know what, specifically, we need a change in the system, but this is not fair to the mom who 
has been a wreck. That has to keep going. To who forward. has had her life? Right. You know, I one of the things that I said while she was here, Becky Caden's mom. I have no idea how she gets up every day. I have no idea how she faces the world with what happened to her. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get that kind of strength. It would take something more than I have, that's yeah. for sure. So we're going to continue updating you about what's going on. But, uh, you know, Caden's birthday is today. And Happy birthday, Caden. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Caden. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yep. Coming up on a uh, up on a special birthday for him, you know, his next, right? Mm-hmm. Moving forward, can't can't forget Caden. Yeah, no, it's so, a very sad subject. It's, yeah, a, it yeah. me. it's rough. But anyway, moving yeah. on, we're we're starting to get a downer here in the yeah. Uh, yeah. Starting to get a downer. I want to next uh, topic. Hold on, we got a topic. Um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We're going to talk about Randy's balls. we got to ah, talk about Randy's come balls. Come on, man. Joy. Boy, that's Randy's a, got a great that, ball That's story. a big jump, isn't and it? And that's going to be a segue hey, can into... We, yeah, can we, can we explain why we're talking about testicles? Yeah, ex- it's a very funny that, bit. Do I need to excuse very myself to get another drink or something right now? No. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to take a pill. Are they, is, is, are they green that's what I don't really want to know. <laughs> You're up, Randy. Uh, can we talk about you know, why we are talking about Turn the testicles? microphone over to yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 yeah. We're loud. We're hot. And anyway, I want to I want to I want to reach well, back a little bit. I was telling Derek's story about uh, you know, I, I was saying uh, my face was hurting my my chin, you know, it was hurting. He's like, "You want, you know, you want me to slap you and make you feel better." So I started laughing and it, it made me think of, you know, something that I went through a couple of years ago where my testicles throbbed like a toothache. Oh shit! Very very painful. So I went through uh, all these tests. You know, I went to the hospital. Uh, all these people I didn't know touch me. Uh, they did a sonogram. You know, like when they do for a baby, and they press on the. They're doing that on my nutsack. You know, oh. and, a wow. deep sonogram yeah, on deep, the balls. On the balls. Very very painful. As if they With that them. sticky shit too. Yeah. Okay, you, you have our attention. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they throbbed like a toothache. It was the wildest thing. So I went through all this. Remember and, that part male because it's going to be important in a minute. Ma- male Throbbing to. T- I had them all. I had like so the, dozens. It's like a whole team in there. You should say I had them both. I, I, but that wouldn't say that wouldn't become quite accurate. Did you come in? There might be a story. They were all there, you know. I'm going to try to avoid the obvious testicle jokes. Go ahead. I even oh, had a proctology. Okay, now that's going to be hard to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> now, now, the funny part about that is, you know, you're bent over the table and whatnot, and he puts his hand on my shoulder, and I look at his hand, and I kind of like freak out. He goes, it's okay as long as I don't put both hands on your shoulder. <laughs> you just reminded me of an old Red Fox joke. Remind me later. Okay. <laughs> so I went through all this. It turns out there was nothing wrong with my testicles. It was a nerve in my back. That was being oh, oh, holy shit. It was radiating. Yeah. yeah. But it was so bad that I allowed complete strangers to fondle me in ways my wife never fondled me. Wow. Yeah. And, and turns out there was nothing wrong with it. Was it worth it? would be like, uh, well, you know, it's been a while. I've been married for 20 years. So. <laughs> be like, where, where, where does our relationship go from here? <laughs> you know, when, you, when you're in bed with your wife, does she touch you and you go, honey, that was great, but it wasn't the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> so I call wait, wait, wait. Let me turn my head and cough. Now do it. Could you lower your voice a little bit, sweetheart? Oh, how's that? Oh, that's so much better. So, so just all you know. All, I give you a copay, honey. The doctors, they don't know what they're doing. They put you through tons of stuff, and turns out that everything you're doing has nothing to do with you know with telling you. You never know. Wow. Yeah. But that's the fun part is, do, you know, you get some chicken do. bones and some dice, <laughs> some, <laughs> some, some sage. You know, this is it. <laughs> so, so when I was going through this, everybody always says, well, uh, you know, want me to cut them off for you? You know, it's like when you're hurting, why does everybody want to cut your thing off? You know, why, <laughs> That's why not really know? what I wanted to Because talk. to them it's funny, and they don't have 10 years' worth of stage experience as a comedian to come up with something. No, more what's topic. funny <laughs> is the fact that Randy had somebody pressing this sonogram shit oh, down, on his, oh, wow. down on his gooey balls, <laughs> and later found out 
that his pain had nothing to do with his ball. And that was painful. You know, just like when they do the baby song. Right? Hey, now, don't you think the person... I bet the song from the crying game came on and that lady just like... <laughs> You know the doctor was probably going. The, you know the doctor. The doctor was. The doctor was probably going. Honestly, we knew what your problem was six months ago. We've just been having so much fun. You think you're pissed? What about the tech who had to do that? Hey, this had nothing to do with that. Hey, hey, come on. You, you know how horrible. bad it's got to be. Horrible for you to Walk into a hospital and say my nuts hurt. Can you please do something? Oh Can you God. please touch my nuts? Hey, you know what? Oh my, my nuts. This is going to lead us bad. into. Oh this is going to lead us into a short broader discussion about testicles but this is probably a great place to hear a song because we got a guy who can do a song about he? balls well, it's are right. you close by yeah, here, 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 jump in, man, jump in. I mean after this are we going to segue into uterine bleeding no 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 okay. no that's, oh that's, Jesus I hope so you want to you want to do a piece for us real quick, and and the rest of us can go pee or whatever we got to do. Yeah, we don't. We don't <laughs> yeah, we uh, give him an intro. We don't want to leave him dangling out there. Yeah, see, you know, I, my guitar playing skills is like Ho- Jose Canseco with Parkinson's. <laughs> I'm saying the dude's missing a finger. Yeah. Anyway, that's oh, a shaky man. joke. <laughs> Well, I, I cleaned this guitar and it fucking shrank. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> Why the hot water? Uh, yeah, you know. It's radio. It's not easy. Yes, I know. <laughs> play to play yeah. show. Play to show and get. Play. It. This is a love song. It's a sing along too. So it's about keeping things fresh in a relationship. testicle. Hey, I do have a uh, little shout out for mommy parts. Mommy parts? Yeah. Has nothing to do with testicles. Wait, wait, wait. 
you got to wait for Christina to get back before you talk talk well, some huh. shit like that. Or huh. hey, what, what you know? No, no, of, actually, let's not wait because uh, I, I was I had to leave because those guys wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> walking, here, walking go. on Chris. <laughs> See, I it was trans- ugly. I have a transitional song as you hear about that. You know, Disney's remaking Sleeping Beauty. Wait, wait, wait. When you say a transitional song, don't tell me. You're singing about somebody getting his dick cut off, right? No, 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 oh. no, no. I, I, no, th- th- this one. Uh, right? Ah! I, I got some of those songs. That is a transition, though. It is. It's a training <laughs> song. A training song. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want to make this statement. I would kiss her where she pees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, you fucks. I would kiss her in the bathroom. <laughs> you sick motherfuckers. <laughs> All right, that's all I got to say. I want to know if we're still talking about the train. I've heard the version of this. uh, I'll kiss her where she smiles. Ah! Ah! I'll kiss her where it it smiles. I went down with the goofy ridge. Hey, Ah! that was the old joke. Or I went to fill in the blank. Again, are we still talking hey, about a train? Hey, I was in Toronto, sir. I've heard very white people. I've heard very white people. I've Well, okay. I just keep, you know, they're talking about... Kissing it where it smells. <laughs> kissing it where it, <laughs> kissing it where it pees. And are we still talking about a tranny? Because that might change the answer. No, 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 no. Are, are you curious about what it looks like? Have you ever thought? What does that look like? Darren, have what you looks ever like ever the been bathroom? With, Darren, have you ever been with a tranny? Have I ever been with a tranny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And would you know? No. And how would I know? Uh, I would know. You know I've only been with two women. Enough, I've only been with two women. <laughs> yeah. You disgust me, Chris Pryors. Well, you, you know what the op- company? You, yeah. you know what they call the operation when a woman gets, you know, made into a man. An added dick to me. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That's what? An added dick to me. You haven't heard that? Was added dick to me. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, Everybody was gone there for a while. Yeah, we took a little break. Back there. What was going on back there? Like, hey, what was allegedly happening? Nothing. Yeah, allegedly. I was to we were talking. James. Allegedly, we, we, we actually we actually settled the Middle Eastern uh, uh, oh, the yeah. crisis. Yeah. We actually made peace, That's so awesome. the rest of you get your shit together. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. All right, well, that awesome intro. That I guess you can awesome. call Israel and tell them to quit gunning people down with helicopters. Hey, 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 they're just protecting their property. <laughs> they're just protecting their property. <laughs> I'm just saying, oh, you know, that's oh, not very nice yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, we're not. I don't think that's the I love Because you're going to hear out. Uh, hey, we <laughs> have to do Douchebag of the Week. Yeah, and we still have to talk about another secret surprise topic that I wanted to throw out there tonight. You know, I, I don't know if you guys have. have show. We have like 12 people. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like the last supper. What is the, uh, <laughs> what's, it, what's the line from Rob Reiner where he comes in, there's like 20 people in the trailer, he goes, any more people in here, we're going to need a lubricant. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. It's kind of ironic suffer. that you say that, uh, Chris, because I'm sure Judas is talking to the Romans right now. Hey. I would like to say that Smokey's has catered this last summer. <laughs> <laughs> Smokey's Catering, 150 North Tonica Street. Mark the time on that. I'm telling you that as a sound bite. <laughs> Man is a professional. I, I like the plug. I had at Smokey's and I would dress me so alive. I would, I would like to line. thank me for being my manager tonight. Thank That's you very a much. perfect segue, actually, to our secret surprise topic because... Uh, one of the things you'd notice if you are friends with Darren on Facebook is that he posts the specials at uh, his restaurant, Smokey's Bar and Grill, which we've discussed tonight, and the fabulous pizza burger. Uh, again, a little promo for the pizza burger, you know um, which is a- absolutely outstanding. I've almost finished my portion. Um, yeah, sorry, shameless plug time. Anyway, moving on. You'll notice if you ever see those pictures that often on Darren's board you'll see Darren loves Beth or Beth loves Darren. I like so I want the whole fucking story on that. How Darren. does that get there? Uh, and what is the <laughs> price right on right that now. particular special? Uh, right. I, I think I know. No, okay, go ahead, Brad. Let's uh, let's you hear your take on this. Miss Beth, Miss Beth, Miss Beth writes. 
the board. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, Miss Beth does not write the board. Oh, I write right. the I write the board every okay. day. I write the board. I didn't think your hand you know, right. But let me tell you what, you know, Perry Manilow writes the board. Kiss my ass, board. man. Awesome. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I do love my wife, but I don't think my wife gives me. <laughs> Gives me much credit. <laughs> and I know she follows me on Facebook, but I want to know just how far down she reads that menu. And every now and then I'll put some shit on the board. Well, we've got some uh, we've got some little ladies that come in and they meet weekly at, at the restaurant. And they all eat, they eat, and it's real cute. And I wrote that on the board one day, and every one of those old, they call them my harem, but I love these ladies, they all turned around and asked me, what do you do? <laughs> because the comment that day was, I heart my wife. That's all I wrote on the board. It was just slid it in between there. And they all, what do you do? What do you do? And I'm like, ah, you guys are jealous. I, I, I do love my wife. Last time I saw something like that, there was a price next to it. Yes, there was. It was $8. It was. It was $8. It was, it was just, uh, it just uh, as a matter of fact, my... Uh, uh, I had to go buy my wife a package of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, I went to Beth loves everybody. That was twelve fifty. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Beth, Beth does Dallas. Yeah. In fairness, I'd rather see Darren's love on the board than on my sandwich. Yeah, you oh, know that, score. Hey. Jeff gets back to zero. That was, that'll cost you more, Jeff. That'll cost you more. All right. So. I did have a customer. I did have a customer one time. Uh, return a pizza. Because it wasn't cooked well <laughs> enough. And he happened to be in the restaurant business. And as a joke, I, when I walked away, I said, yeah, thanks, you know. And he said, oh, God, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Jimmy Rankin, this one's for you. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not mad at all. He said, hey, don't or, uh, don't burn my pizza. And I told him, if you apply enough spit, Jim, nothing will burn. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's and not that true. Then let that be a lesson. Put it in the oven. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. You cook it yourself. <laughs> I'm saying, cook it yourself. So that's the rest of the story on Beth loves Darren. I do love my wife. Miss Beth loves me too. And how I know this? <laughs> my key still fits in the door. <laughs> I love her. You guys were cracking me up before. <clears throat> Oh, oh, shit, oh, no. oh, God, funny sad. story, funny Jamie, <laughs> wait, Jamie wait, Stone. Wait, yeah, wait, wait, Jamie, well, yeah, Jamie just reminded us. We still got to do douchebag. Yeah, we, we have time. Is it, is it, is it worth this? Yeah, it is worth it. Okay, let's go. Uh, Miss Beth answered uh, the phone earlier. Miss Beth is my wife. <laughs> we own a bar, Smokey's Bar and Grill, and she answered it, Stupids, oh, yeah. which was <laughs> another... Which was a, a bar that has since been closed in town. Yeah, it was kind of and when she realized what she had done, she froze like a deer in the headlights. And I snatched the phone from her, and I, I grabbed it, and I said, this is Stupid's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? Yeah. You, you, you floored the yes. entire bar. Yeah, man, it was, it was a good, good, funny moment. Except the, time, for, the timing was great. The except, for, except for the fact that I will not get laid for the next three months. <laughs> so, um... Uh, <laughs> kind of hurting on that end, but yeah, the comedic uh, relief was there. Eat it, Smokies. I'm going to give uh, a couple of shout-outs, and then we're going to move to Douchebag. And the first shout-out goes to Natasha McRae, who's a loyal listener. Hi, Natasha. Uh, very often she's pulling us up after she gets home from work, and and then I get feedback from her later on whether or not you guys were idiots. And Yeah, we were. Well, I can tell you that actually, right now. <laughs> she's actually giving us great feedback, very positive feedback about everybody. She loves Christina, by the way, who's okay. not talking very much. Uh, I mean, I can only, I can only Arizona Stanford has her attention. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, the poor girl's in shock. She's waiting for the she's, conversation to become remotely intellectual. Yeah, she's, oh, she's okay, having. Don't worry, I don't have any high food ideas. So. <laughs> Once she picks her jaw up off the floor, from I mean, she has been exposed to some some very 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 <laughs> differing ideas. Oh, yeah, I maybe we should turn basketball. off Arizona. You better believe it. I wish those shorts were seventy. Did you enjoy the story about the ball play before? By the end, uh, yeah. you got the, oh, oh, the black one. Like, Hand me that, or you do it. Just that I was like, I, I love balls too, guys. Like, no. I mean, they're great. I'm glad you have them. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> they're, the ugly, they're the ugliest part of the body. I mean, they are. Oh, yeah. okay. they are. They're, they're, they're only low and getting low. You know, I have this fucking amazing thing. It's called a smartphone. It makes that look <laughs> right back the fuck on. It's fucking magic. Derek, you were saying. <laughs> 
Douchebag of the week. Yeah. Um, douchebag of the week. I've got pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. Okay, got, Darren, I've let's got, roll. I've got one and one candidate only for douchebag of the week, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call out Michael Moore by name. Hey, listen, you fucking puke. The guy put his life on the line. He protects more shit than you'll ever fucking understand. He is no coward. You fucking pussy. Get your fat ass out there and you try it for a while. We'll see how long you last. Stop your fucking bullshit. The man's a hero. Chris Maybe Kyle. You should have said what he tweeted first. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> no, I tell you what. No, he put it out there. <laughs> he put it out there that he was talking. So, very well, very well, well, so I will. Hey, you know. Oh, so I will. No, I will put it out there right now. Uh, this Michael Moore put it out there that fucking all snipers are fucking cowards and they shot somebody in the back. Hey, listen. Hey, fuck him anyway. I'll paraphrase this. Fuck you, Michael Moore. Hey, you know what? Here's you the deal. pussy punk motherfucker. You piece of shit. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, Darren, you, know, you, need know, you, know, you need to come out of your show and take a stand. No, I'm not. <laughs> hey, I know. Here's it. No, here's no, the deal. I'll tell you what, one thing about the sniper. He protected an area only slightly larger than Michael Moore. <laughs> Jamie Stone, I'll be here all week. <laughs> Here's the next one with that, because he claimed that the sniper shot his uncle. If his uncle was built like Michael Moore, Stevie yeah, Wonder would have hit with a Derringer at 50 yards. Yeah, they, you know, Michael Moore played it off like what this guy did was cowardice and, and cheap and cheesy. Fuck you, Michael Moore. You've never been in. You will never know. You are a punk. I hope you need something from me someday. I wouldn't shit on your head if your you neck know, was on he, fire. He, he probably would like the pizza burger. You know, he did. Yeah. You know, Michael, <laughs> I, 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 de- I, definitely, I definitely think Michael Moore would like the pizza cheeseburger from Smokey's Bar and Grill. <laughs> located <laughs> conveniently on... What's the address again? <laughs> Choke on it, you fuck. 150 tall. American <laughs> motherfucker. Is that north? You go home to the little rat hole. Is that north or south? Oh, fuck him. Choke on you fuck street. Fuck Isn't him. It? Choke on your An American hero. Too. He's gonna he's gonna want to piss yeah, on the neck. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think we just lost out Michael Moore account for promoting the next movie on the very yeah. Good place. I think okay. Michael Moore's gonna be here in April. Oh, isn't oh, I, would, oh, I, I would like to let everybody know that the opinions expressed by me are not those expressed by Gone Rogue Radio, and Michael Moore can suck my dick. Or Smokey's Bar and Grill, conveniently located on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, Michael Moore, you coward motherfucker. Okay. Call, call me a We've fucking. We've got your, your your nomination is doing that. Submission no. accepted. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Chris. Are you? Did you sports already? <laughs> okay, all right. So closer. we'll pass on Chris to last. Um, <coughs> Who also had Michael Moore, but now has to change his no, stance. No, 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 uh, no, Jamie, you got somebody that you'd yeah, like to throw into the box? Uh, I really, I really don't. I, I I will tell you the one thing. I, I get annoyed at stuff I see online. Somebody had posted a link to an article about a woman who saw the back of a bus that had, for their for their lights on the back, they were in the shape of stars. And she complained that the bus had pentagrams <laughs> on the back of the pentagrams, also known as stars. And she complained that they had them on the back of the bus and said they were satanic and they should be removed because we couldn't have crosses or stars of David on the back, but they had pentagrams. They're stars, lady. Get over yourself. Get your shit together. So Look up say- in the sky. They're fucking everywhere. So go home. Say- go home. Take a hot shower, and let's talk about it later. Okay. Jamie, Jamie, let me get this straight. There was a pentagram. A pentagram. In all fairness, it was a Motley Crue bus. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a pentagram. The 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 uh, universal symbol for good job. I remember. All through my yeah, elementary school. Day. Absolutely. I you got the gold, gold star in you know, I never had, my forehead. I never had a teacher come up to me and say, you got an A on the, on the history test. That's a gold pentagram for you. Yes. Nobody ever said that. Yes. But there, little did we know. Twinkle, pentagram. twinkle, little pentagram. Pentagram. <laughs> pentagram bright, pentagram light. First pentagram I wish I... It's a fucking star. Take a nap. Okay. Hey, settle, settle down, friend. Pentagram <laughs> bitch star. has been accepted as a nomination. <laughs> uh, Pentagram bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christina, how about you? you Can got come one? circle back around. Circle back around. No. Oh, okay, she's still right. thinking Brad, about you somebody you want to bitch about. I've been thinking of switching to decaf. Yeah, what do you think? I'll be hating people. <laughs> <laughs> You should have been prepared. I should have been more hateful this week. I apologize, guys. Motherfuck me. It's kind of fun. You should try it. <laughs> Jenny McCarthy. Oh! Okay, this is out of oh, the field. Is, the, uh, is this about the... Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Here we go. I know that. I know. I know what your direction. No, going Brad. Brad's got it going on. What do you got, Brad? Um, Jenny McCarthy is a celebrity. All right, who latched upon the anti-vax movement and helped proliferate <laughs> it to the point to where now there's outbreaks of measles mm-hmm. in measles. more than yes, more than are. one spot in this country. And this week it was Disneyland. Like Aww. kids are getting it from rides and there's stuff like that. Outbreaks of Disneyland? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay. In, Calif- <laughs> in California. So measles. measles. Right. Fucking measles. It was it was eradicated in the United States at one point. Yes. You know? Maybe maybe during a small world they went to the country that still had it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! That's the funniest thing I've said in ten days. <laughs> okay. The, uh, sorry. The third, yeah, sorry. World, the third world. Back, back to you. It's a sorry. small <laughs> world. <laughs> been canceled. Let the man. I'm laughing, but when it's polio, it's like it's not yeah. going to be a joke. Like yeah, polio has been gone for right a while. Down, thank yeah. God. We have no like kids still crippled from polio. I got news. You know what? I got news for you. You're a comedian. Nothing's off limits. No, no, no. I'm... That's just it. it. Polio, wait, polio wait, isn't... <laughs> dick face. It's, oh, taken, it's taken part... It's, polio has taken hold in parts of Africa. Again. Sure it has. Yeah. And it, there's a chance that it could it could Spread. make it back here. Yeah. Yes. Polio Jesus. Defense. That's horrifying. Yeah, it is horrifying. It, I, I'm watching my mother wait, deteriorate. Wait, wait, wait. Brad, can you re- reiterate right on right that? Like, you mean- she's... She had polio when, her, when she was a baby, and now okay. her her nerves are failing her. She she can't move. She can't hardly walk. Jesus. Yeah, it's terrible. Degenerative nerves. Yep. Yeah. And it's called post polio syndrome. So you're yeah. saying that the the way maybe Ebola moved across the Atlantic, uh, it's always a possibility. Yeah, if you're not um, in it's, an it's, it's not. It's not polio very likely. <laughs> It, well, people do get vaccinated, and the one thing people don't realize about vaccinations is it's not 100%. There's always a chance that it won't work in somebody. But that's, and, and that's chance why we have the longevity small. of the diseases. That's why no no vaccine is 100%. We no, know it's that. not. Well, of yeah. course not, but it's, but it's a hell of a lot better than... But through diligent yeah, treatment and control... Like, I'll take my chance of the vaccine. There's a thing that biologists call herd immunity, all right? Yes. You, you, not, you inoculate the people that can get it so that the people that can't take it are are protected as well. Because, because anybody that has exposed. like a... Yeah. If they have an immune deficiency disease, uh, HIV, AIDS... Um, other autoimmune diseases. They can't take those vaccines because they can't, they don't have the ability to produce antibodies to get rid of them. To, to work correctly. Yeah, for, yeah. for an antibody, for, a, for a, uh, uh, an inoculation to work, you have to be able to let your body right. work with the chemical that's been induced mm-hmm. to your, create the antibody. Your, your body naturally creates the antibodies sure. to eradicate that. I They're not putting the antibody in your body. No, 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 your body creates it. Dead yes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's nine times out of ten, it's a dead vaccine. Um, <coughs> there's a few, I think, that are weakened cultures, but it's not yeah. it's not very common. Your flu virus. Explain the flu virus. Flu virus is actually pretty, pretty interesting because um, each year, the... the the powers Cliff that be get along. Yeah, they get together. They <clears> pick like what they think is going to be the most dominant version of flu, Strain. because there's there's hundreds of strains of flu. Mm-hmm. Um, they get it's almost that, like speculating, they, right? In, it in is the oil industry. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly like that. So they put that vaccine out. It's we think this one's going to take hold the strongest, so we vaccinate for that. They're not always right, and this year they're not right. There's a lot of people dying from flu. Wow. wow. Yeah. You know, people with weakened immune systems that can't fight it off. Right, right. You know, it's serious. It's serious shit, man. Okay, Jenny McCarthy accepted. Yep. Very I good. Definitely. Very good. All good right. nomination. I can't wait to hear that. Uh, are you ready now? Oh, did you go yet? Okay. Randy, no. you got somebody? Yeah, you got to uh, go before Chris though. And, and I got one again though. It's it's like, uh, well, no, she she's just back, back in here. Yeah. And, uh, and that was last year. That was last year. Uh, no, I'd like to nominate the uh, manager of my mother's trailer. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh my God! This, is, this has become so specific all of a sudden. Yes. His name is Tom Dickhead Snow. And, uh, Tommy Snow. Uh, basically, the trailer park <laughs> caused my mom's trailer to freeze over and burst, and it's because wow. they went under her trailer when it was cold and left the screen <clears> open overnight. Um, she's lived there for 20 some years. It used to be, you know, an old people retirement trailer park. It was really nice, you know, and it's degraded over the years. Well, this new management company, FR Community, came in, took over, and they don't know shit about trailers. They caused three trailers to, to pop their pipes. And when this was going on, the manager was nowhere to be found. 
you couldn't get any resolution. It took over a week and like a week and two days for them to fix my mom's trailer. And then there's still another trailer, I guess, in the park that's not fixed. And manager he's like, no. Wow. You, you need to communicate with the people. Hey, this is what's going on. We got to dig a hole. You know, you're in, a, you're in there with no water. You can't flush toilets. You know, you can't bathe. You can't do dishes. And, yeah. And they did nothing. They didn't want to put her up in a hotel. My mom's old. She's disabled. You know, they didn't do anything to help her situation whatsoever. Wow. And that's a tough one. He just hit out. He, and that, that's douchebaggery right there. Oh, yeah. We got to give him an honorary fuck you from the cast regardless um, fuck you. Can we do that together? Yeah, one, we'll two, three. Fuck, fuck you. you. Douche. That's a good one. That was All a right. company fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Nomination accepted. Christina, are, are we ready yet? You got somebody that you're pissed off? No, no, no. Come I on. I, I can go. I can you you, you can't. Chris, you can't. Chris has got this Look pass. Look at this guy go. Yeah, but you're trying to take a pass. You can't take a pass. No, I'm trying to Google really quickly because I don't watch the videos. All right, Chris, what do you got for I don't me? have a name for this douchebag. Uh, oh, it's, interesting. It is a new story that I think we've all heard in the last couple of days. Uh, stand-up comics. It might seem trivial, but I think this is the direction our country is going. An Alabama man was pulled over and busted <laughs> in Florida, Georgia for distracted driving as he munched on a McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese. The officer explained okay. to me he had observed me eating a burger for two miles. He said specifically three times. You just can't go down the road eating a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the name of the officer, but I would say... Mayor, Mc, Mayor Officer McCheese. <laughs> officer McDouchebag. Yeah. I'm just saying, who among ye <laughs> cast the first fucking... Stack in your contact. Excellent, Isn't it? Excellent, I mean, excellent. especially right, cops sure. in general, right? Cops have never fucking drink some coffee, maybe, in their cup. I mean, come on. If you're going to enforce this law to the max, we shouldn't have fucking cup holders in our fucking cars. Yeah. So, you, so you're saying, Chris, that, so you're saying that the laws that they, I'm sure there's a law written that says the you cannot, kind of vague, they you don't cannot, you cannot, you're eating a fucking hamburger. Well, so that's hey, a law, God, so that's, if you're using chopsticks, I can understand, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but the guy, but the guy is breaking. Loop, I can understand. So, so now we are being selective on the laws that we. No, no, no. Before you go any further, person. Oh, this has got to be common sense. This I can't be stupid. You can't be stupid and exactly. be a cop. You cannot be a dumbass. Exactly. You do not hire idiot cops. I got news for you. For your fucking. Right. You know what I can tell? That say, hey, wait a minute. There's a guy eating a hamburger. You know, I mean, yeah. how slow... I how, love how the guy's you, response. But I need backup. He said, he, he said, I shouldn't have been... I guess I shouldn't have been enjoying my burger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can tell you one thing... I can it tell you one thing double. about... It was double. Double. <laughs> I can tell you something about that cop that nobody thought about. He don't have kids. Because I'll tell you what. Eating a hamburger in your car behind the wheel is the most fucking quiet you will have yeah. during a meal yeah. for 18 fucking years. Okay. okay. As I'm pulling, uh, I'm pulling host prerogative this week, and I'm going to submit one of my own. Um, and this is sort of personal for me because I saw something recently I really didn't like. And at this point, I want to give a shout out to Bubba Radio listeners and MC Bubba, who, you know, rebroadcasts this show concurrently while we're live here. Nice. And so he's a good dude. You know, he's been on our side and he's talked to us during the show, given us audio feedback, really helped us become a better product. And so good guy and great guy to work with. Um, and I was watching his show, which has video, um, at his request, he was like, Hey, I got something I'm going to announce. And it's, it's a really cool thing. If you're into paranormal, go find his Facebook page, Bubble radio, give it a like and check out the things that he has to give you. Um, but while I was there, Bubba radio has a chat room and in that chat room, some guests arrived and they started talking real vile shit. Like they started not just being insulting to MC Bubba, but threatening to kill him, shoot him, threatening to shoot his guest. It was really beyond the line of what was acceptable for me. And I was in the chat room and I made it known that I thought that was pretty unacceptable that, you know, this really isn't the place for that. 
You know, and is how there, is there a place for that? No. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, Since a white then, supremacist group called <laughs> and fucking threatened me, and uh, I'll, I'll share the link later. So I found out that these guys are actually from another internet radio station called Southern Fried Radio. And I don't want to give them any more notice than that other than, you know what, that, that is really unacceptable behavior regardless of what the competitive level is between you guys. It's ridiculous and it's, it's not acceptable. It's deep it, oh, it, it is. It is. <laughs> and I also want to point out that I'm not... A double bagger. Yeah. Double. I'm not mad at you. And I'm not going to call you the chicken shit that you are, but I am going to come talk to you one of these days, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to say to my face what you said in that chat room, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll go. Yeah. I can, I can probably arrange that. Probably not going to work out real well for you, but you know what? I'm going to give you the opportunity because I always, I'm, I'm one of those guys that likes to talk to somebody in person. You know, all this bullshit with chat rooms and stuff. You're going to be <laughs> tough there, but, and I'm not saying I'm going to go yeah. kick somebody's ass. I say publicly that I'm going to go talk to somebody and give them an opportunity to give me feedback what on the whole set. here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> and we're going to clear that shit up. That's what's going to happen. So uh, my nomination for Douchebag of the Week is Southern Fried Radio and the two guys who were in that chat room saying vile <laughs> things that didn't need to be there. Making threats to kill somebody not necessary over a radio station. Especially an internet radio station that nobody fucking listens to anyway. Sorry, but that's the truth. All right. Anyway, um, Christina, you got somebody you want to throw under the bus? No. I don't, you know what? I don't really, like, there's nobody that I can think of. Like, maybe I fucking hate Fox. All right. Michigan. You know what? Christina doesn't get this game where she okay. says witty things and then I give her points. This is really easy. Darren already oh, understands his oh, role. He knows he's going to lose anyway. He doesn't give a shit and he works within the program. Christina's right. Like, anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and say. Rip uh, on somebody. Of this week since I don't have, like, I really try to stay out of the news as much as possible. I'm trying to do specific things. Yeah. Mother cunt. Jesus, what Who's are this you Mother country. Right. Mother, <laughs> Mother country. Mother country, baby Jesus. Jesus. What do you want this guy from me? <laughs> <I think they're laughs> Mother Mother we're, we're doing all right. We, I mean, we, uh, we, 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 who could, why, why do I have to specifically hate somebody? Because it's you know what? It's, it's a douchebag of the week. It's you're not. You don't have to hate them. You just call it. All right. Wait. Yes. Let's. It can't be a movement. It's got to be a specific. And Chris, give her a definition of a douchebag. I don't know what a douchebag is. No, no, no. By the definition of the show. Somebody who's hard is insincere. Somebody who's sincere. sincere. Disingenuous. You know, that's genuine. I, I think a tangible genuine, thing would be... That, to me, that's a douchebag. Like, so, douchebag could be, can't be like the war on drugs or like... <laughs> right. You know, it has to be something tangible. <laughs> I totally think that's still a douchebag. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's done so well. They think of <laughs> fucking pointless waste of financial resources is one thing, but douchebag, I don't that's know. That's a very vague term, douchebag. <laughs> it's a big very term. Wide, but okay. that was a very wide and very great definition of douchebag. Hasn't anybody pissed you off in the last week? Douchebag. No, not in the last week, but um, there's a disturbing trend. I don't know who the guy is, so I have no name. But, like, whoever. Oh, fuck, I can't even do this. I don't want to say anything. No, just say um, it. Say, uh, we, are you we, kidding we, me? In, in this group? No, Charles Bukowski's a misogynist. That's real. He fucking hates ladies. Okay, Brady Snellis. I love you, but you're a fucking cyni- like cynical bastard. Like, uh, Who? Who? you're into positivism. Like, name, uh, name, name, Brady Snellis. He wrote American Psycho. And oh, Bedford, shit. Hero, has, a great, has a great podcast, and he's definitely not a sellout. I love the things that he says about... You know, not being uh, outraged, us having outrage culture, but he fucking hates ladies. Um, he picks, he picked on Carrie Brownstein from uh, Portlandia on his show, and now he's on hiatus. So I'm fucking pissed about that because even though I hate you, I listen. Like, uh, is, he, is he a married guy? No, he's gay. <laughs> he's yeah. super. He's he's is, I do have to make. He likes the youngest yeah. too, which is also I think why we're kindred. I do have to make an observation that Christina has grabbed the microphone <laughs> and is <laughs> ranting into it like a stand-up because comic with nine HBO specials. So this is awesome. I had to think about it. I had to think about it. This is uh, no, really, That's seriously. This is you're on a roll. Keep going, baby. Keep going. He's late. <laughs> he's just a dad. He's, he's a great Chris person. Priors. 
Like, I guess with his ideas. He's, I'm glad that the theory and the dialect is going on, but right. otherwise. I'm going to have oh, to cut you off. short because of this reason only. All right. Wait, no point. I, I, I called up Michael Moore. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, I just said. Wait, hang on, hang on. Let, let him finish it. Let him finish, him finish and then I'll subtract <laughs> points. Are we back on Michael Moore again? Right, if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna get points deducted, I'm gonna say, hey, support the people around you that have made the biggest ever absolutely uh, sacrifice that any man or woman could ever make. They're supporting people that don't know their name, speak their language. Uh, people that just don't understand cannot possibly fathom what these people are doing out there. Uh, shout out to any service member serving. Specifically, friends of the show at Fort Carson, Colorado. The Green Berets nice. out there, you motherfuckers are keeping shit safe. <laughs> And if any of you are 18 to 24, go ahead and send us <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta tell you, it's funny to me. Michael Moore is, uh, Darren's been on Michael Moore so much he needs his own zip code. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on Michael Moore than, more than Mrs. Michael Moore. Uh, you know, uh, do you blame Mrs. Michael Moore? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Angel, do you have yeah. a, somebody you want to rip on this Angel, week? Angel, hi. Angel's our social media girl. So you got you are welcome to a nomination if you'd like to submit one. Get in there. Please this submit is your Michael shot. Moore. Please submit your Michael Moore. Come on, this oh my God. we all have to have individual douchebags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Con- can't be care- We're not doing a collaborative We're effort here. Backing on each other's douchebags. This oh, is okay. not a union. All right. Well, if you'd want to choose Michael Moore, you could. It's the individual. Everyone's got an individual. Guys, a fucking. Dude. How about Sean Hannity? <laughs> let's make it. Let's make it balance. Go Sean Hannity and Michael Moore on either side. That balances things out. All right, letter submitter nomination. I've what? I've got a few, but I'm gonna be a good girl and keep my mouth shut. Oh no! Oh, no, 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 no! That's unacceptable. That is unacceptable. How disappointing. Inside joke. Inside joke. Yeah. No, it's not a joke. Oh. <laughs> this is your this is your chance, baby. Go for it. Uh, no, no, no. Open no. up. Uh, no, open. we're passing on that one. No, no I'm calling host prerogative again. <laughs> we, are, we are passing on that one. And uh, we have a collection. We have, we have the, the trailer park manager. Oh, yeah. Thank Come you, on. Michael Moore. Uh, Where's Jenny McCarthy? Does he have one? Jenny McCarthy was good. We got the lady with the pentagrams in the back of the, the lady with the pentagrams. Also good. The stars. We got the state trooper no, no, no. and uh, Alabama. Okay. Uh, we got uh, who's your douchebag? Mike. <laughs> oh, oh my God! God. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. 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 If anybody didn't hear me earlier, I said Michael Moore was oh, a fucking yeah. douche. Show, show, Darren. If you got any opinions, could you please speak up now? The show's almost <laughs> over. Yeah. I think Michael Moore should just keep his little lips shut. Little lips. Little lips. <laughs> Halo. Okay, How do you get, you so can't get nine cheeseburgers past little right? lips. Michael Moore. Fuck him, he's a coward punk Southern motherfucker. Southern Fry Radio. Derek's oh, in charge. And the winner is... Michael Moore. Jamie L. Ron Hubbard. Just to see if that's right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 fucking say blindsided. And you can find that out on page 422 of yes, Batman. That's right. They knew it was coming. They knew it was coming. Plan your life. They know it's there. Come on. Dianetics. Dianetics. And before we get out of here, I want to talk about one quick thing, an interesting thing that happened to me here at Mesa City Limits. We record and broadcast live every Thursday night at 9 o'clock right here in Mesa City. You can see us through the windows. If you want to stop by and say hi, please do that. If you want to get a good meal, you stop at Darren's place around the corner. You get something to eat, you come over here. You see a great show Fridays and Saturdays. But something else that you might see. Recently, I was standing where I'm standing right now, looking at Dr. Gonzo, where you were, Chris, standing on the other side of the bar, where you are. Gonzo was right there. And over Gonzo's shoulder, standing in that door, I saw a man in white. Looking at Dr. Gonzo wow. and I, allegedly. Wow. and That's allegedly. Cool. I told Gonzo about it, and he said, "Yes, I know. It happens here all the time." Yeah, there's a couple yeah. photographs that are. Uh, I, 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 I'll say okay. this. Oh, dude, that is years, way that cool. Really, it hasn't really <clears throat> happened to me, but I'm blind in one eye, so what the fuck do I know? 
I'm just saying, <laughs> you're not the first guy. I've done a lot, I, I live in uh, one of the most haunted cities in the southeast. I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, which has like more ghosts per capita. It's ridiculous. That's it's very interesting. That's that's story number two. There, yeah. <laughs> but so I, I, I love I, know, I, know, I love stories like this. Because so you like, uh, you actually do haunted tours, right? I do, I do. When I'm off season in the summertime, when I'm not on the road, I go and right. do uh, the haunted Wilmington tours and haunt Wilmington. Shout out for great. that. Cause yeah, that's we've, really cool. We've actually seen stuff on the tours that, that just blow your mind. Well, it's great. you might be you know might you might witness something here in Mason City because just prior to the show starting tonight, I was talking to Randy, our resident graphic designer. And he's sitting where you are now, Jamie. And I was on that side of the bar uh, putting in audio equipment. And I saw somebody walk past <coughs> that curtain right there coming oh, wow. from the basement out to the stage. Allegedly. No, that's cool. But you know what? I, I believe these old buildings. and uh, I was standing right there. This town's going to have a lot of history. And it's right. cool because if you come to – I said this earlier today, so it's kind of a repeated thing. But – Honestly, this is a cool town. Uh, my daughter, she asked me, she said, where are you going? I said, Mason City. She said, what's that like? And I showed her a picture from 1850. And she said, wow, what year is that? I said, 1850. Since then, they've paved the street. <laughs> that's, pretty much, <laughs> that, that's pretty much about it. Yeah. But you guys, you guys have got a lot of history here, so chances right. are... Think of how many people worked and lived and functioned right, in these buildings. Right. You guys are probably haunted as fuck. And I would like to point yeah. out this particular experience that I had. And I asked Randy if he saw it because it was so plain to me. If you look through the bar, back through that curtain right mm -hmm. there, you'll see a, a light switch on the wall. That was completely obscured. And it was a figure in brown, brown uh, top and brown wow. pants. It, it looked like a guy. And... As the person walked by to where the stage is now, um, and there are stairs, the level of the person didn't change. Like they were going up the yeah, stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was walking on. And that's right. a common phenomenon right. with haunted places. You'll see people right. function as though it was the original layout. Right. You'll, see, you'll see people from the knee up yep. because the floor has been raised by two feet. And I did a feature set here recently at Mason City, and I was standing behind the stage where the little stairs are. And from that, it leads to the basement here under the comedy club where we have various things stored. And um, as I was standing there waiting to be introduced, I clearly heard someone cough at the bottom of the stairs behind me. Wow. Plain as day. It was as if somebody was there, and I turned around, and nobody was there. Oh, that's cool. See, I, I'm, I'm totally into that stuff. Yeah. As, a, as a historian, and I have a history degree, and as, as somebody who lives in a haunted town with a lot of history, Revolutionary War, Civil War, I totally get into this shit. Well, and, that's uh, another reason yeah, I can come to the talk. shows this weekend. You know, if you want to hang around and talk to Jamie about ghosts, and you want to possibly see a ghost, this is a cool place to come Friday, Saturday night. Yeah, man, you want to talk to me about ghosts, I'll do an hour and a half on ghosts, man. I yeah. love it. I think it's great. Yeah. You know, you get people that, do, that live and work in places for 50 years, and they die, and it's like for, for the next 110 years, you will see people walking around. People have come in and said, oh, dude, that guy's suit is great. The guy in the old brown suit with the bow tie, he was really friendly, and they'll be like, uh, I'm the only one here. And that's yeah. so cool. I love that. Well, one of the things that my first experience here, I saw the guy in white standing over there in that doorway. Um, I at first thought maybe the doctor guy that Chris has talked about previously on the show. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they, had, uh, they did abortions here, right, at one Oof. time. They wow. had This was sort of like a hospital. But and they're ghosts of protesters. It's really... <laughs> 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 I'm teasing. But the guy I saw, it looked more like a white apron to me. Well, that's creepy. So I don't know what... Well, you know, uh, look at the picture. Uh, it, it used to be a meat market. Oh, well, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, look at the The picture's not up there now. No, it's over oh, here. It's right there. That's the one. Oh, that's cool. Any of those guys look familiar? Yeah, I think Darren took that picture when he was a teenager. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the guy on the left. It looks so. like the guy on the left. There you go. This well, is awesome. For those of you who can't see out and listening radio, internet radio land, we're looking at a picture of the, what year is this? I have no idea what year that is. This is, I would say this is Early probably, 1900s, I, I was going to say this is probably 19 teens to 1920s, and it is Mason City Limits, back when it was a butcher shop, and it is amazing. Do uh, you got this picture on the internet? 
Uh, no, somebody gave you, it. You, seriously, you need to scan this thing, put it online, because it's awesome. Yeah. When you look at this building, I would say this building, if looking around, I'd say this building dates back to about 1850, 1860s. Yes, that would be accurate. Yeah, that would be about looking, right. Because I'm looking at the... 1874, uh, actually. Yeah. What's that? 1874. Okay, cool. I'm a little off, but Good I'm looking, guess, at, the, though. I'm looking at the pressed tin or uh, aluminum ceilings. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. So it's, it's an amazing place. So even if you don't want to come out for the comedy, because I'm performing this weekend, and you may not <laughs> like me, but if you don't like me, at least you will love the building, and you'll love Chris, and you'll love the drinks, and you'll love uh, eating over at Smokey's, yeah, which is conveniently located at... Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you get a discount if you do. If you go eat at Darren's That's and then come right. see Jamie, you get a discount on your tickets to see Jamie. Come to me, watch my comedy, and then come to me after the show and talk about talk ghosts. About I ghosts. absolutely love Talk to me about history. Talk and to that, me about anything. And the very funny Chris Smith is on the show. Awesome. What's that? Chris Smith is on the show. Chris who? Again. Chris Smith. Chris Smith is coming. Out. Chris Smith the feature? Chris Smith is the feature. Chris Smith will be the feature. So it's possible, at least, that the guy that in white I saw. I <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Stone's a stage the name. <laughs> the guy in the doorway was not going to be the feature this weekend, but it could have been a butcher here at one time, possibly. That's interesting because it, it didn't look like a doctor thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know that you talked about the doctor being moved on from here. And that was upstairs. Potentially. That was upstairs. But I've also had other experiences here, including being right here, getting ready to broadcast the show and hearing someone clearly and plainly walking above my head. And Chris wasn't up there. Nobody was up there. Wow. Yeah. Actually, a former co-host on the you show know, was freaked when out they start tap to... dancing, that's when you get to <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. It's a dance studio from fucking 1928. <laughs> I just want to go on record as saying dead people don't bother me. Live ones do. <laughs> it was great. I heard footsteps, and then somebody broke into a rousing rendition of Dancing Queen by ABBA. I don't know what that is. It's a very, very multi, multi-sensual ghost. Dancing <laughs> I may be totally wrong, but I'm not. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you got something to take us out while we go away? We'll be back in a week, and we'll have more to talk about. Um, in the meantime, make sure you check out all the other things that we offer, which include a morning show called the Indie, Indie Bohemians from Nashville, seven to nine Monday through Thursday. Uh, if you're in the, you know, if you want to know what's up in the world, we play news every day at five o'clock. That's brought to us by Democracy Now, which is a really cool organization that tells the truth. It's a great news station. Absolutely, and. Fair and balanced. That's true. Tuesdays, we have Davin's Den from Warwick, New York, with a professional comic named Davin Rosenblatt, a good friend of mine. And coming up this Friday, uh, well, you know what? That's tomorrow. It's going to be really cool. We've got a new addition to the lineup called the Joe Cumia Show. Joe is the little brother of Anthony Cumia from Opie and Anthony fame. Oh, cool. And was Brother Joe on ONA. So he was a veteran from that show, now has his own show. Obviously, there were some issues with Anthony and all that had to come crashing down. But uh, Brother Joe has his own show now, and he's going to be on our station every Friday night. And we're going to start with three straight hours of Brother Joe tomorrow night. First, we're going to have... His hour with Vincent Pastore from The Sopranos, which is really cool. And then hour number two will be Mario Andretti. And then hour number three will be his current episode. So if you want to find out who's going to be hour number three, the guy from this week, go to his website, Joseph Cumia Show, and you can check out his lineup there. He also has... Um, recordings of previous episodes available for download there as well. So, thanks for Joe Cumia for adding himself to our. It's the first time I've ever been contacted by an executive producer for this radio station. That was kind of cool. Nice. Yeah, and uh, we're soon to be adding more shows similar to that with other guys who are on more of a national level. So we're gonna have local stuff like this. And we're going to have stuff that will appeal to a broader audience as well. So, anyway, really cool things. Jeff, you want to hear about Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> no apologies. <laughs> oh, God. What else could he say? Just made his liar pay. What did you people think? Drugged or drinks <laughs> Not in a sun Not in a sun People say Not in a sun Not in a sun Guilty
wanted to do that one more time. That was great. <laughs> well, I got the worst one. Pull up your pants and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, which is this? Sedate each other while you're loving them. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.